I'm not a very funny person. In fact, if you asked my friends or family, they would tell you what a serious person I am. Whether it is work or vacations, home or hobbies, I take everything very seriously. You should see the Excel sheets I make to plan my holidays. For a two-day trip, I have nothing less than 117 items on my checklist. So, when I was pregnant with my first daughter, it was inevitable that I would take pregnancy very seriously. I signed up for weekly updates from parenting websites. I ordered books by the dozen. The book, What to Expect When You're Expecting, was my Bible, and I read every chapter in that book. Well, almost every chapter. As my due date approached, I read and reread everything about labor, contractions, and all that stuff. I was in complete control of everything. And then, just like that, without any warning, I ended up in the operating theater with a last-minute, unplanned caesarean, or C-section, as my doctor called it. When I heard the news, I was shocked. It's all right, she tried reassuring me. We do this kind of thing all the time. Don't worry about it. But doctor, you don't understand, I cried. I have not even read the chapter on caesareans. I can't believe I'm being tested on the only thing I skipped in the book. She looked at me, looked at the other doctors in the operating theater, and I don't even want to talk about just how hard they all laughed at me that day. It was not funny then, but it was kind of funny when I went in for my second daughter's delivery, and the doctor, the same one, very tongue-in-cheek asked me, so, I hope you have read and revised the chapter on caesareans at least this time around. Clearly, this was all one big cosmic prank, and guess what? The joke was on me. I mean, here I was at the brink of what was going to be a very important part of my life, and everybody was laughing at me. Surely this was a cruel joke, or was it? Maybe, just maybe, this was the universe's way of telling me to take a chill pill. And that was the beginning of my journey with parenting and humor in parenting. The thing about parenting is that we take it all so seriously. So here's my thought. What would happen if we did not take everything so seriously? Now, I'm not for a moment advocating that we be casual or careless or negligent. All I'm saying is, what if we loosened up a bit? What if we learn to enjoy it more? Take milestones, for example. Milestones are probably the most important mantra of the modern parent. Remember that heady rush, that sense of achievement at having completed one more milestone? Admit it, aren't you secretly thrilled that you're ahead of the curve? Oh, your son can say his ABCs. Well, guess what? My daughter can recite Baba Black Sheep. I must have a genius on my hands. My daughter's pediatrician used to tell me, watch for progress, not deadlines. So, of course, I watched for deadlines. But I do wonder, would it really make a big difference if a milestone were to occur a month or two this way or that? I mean, imagine your daughter filling out her college applications many years from now. What are the chances that she will see this question in the application form? Question number 13. When did you stop sucking your thumb? Or how about question number 17? When did you complete potty training? What I've realized is that as the years go by, it is harder and harder to remember all the milestones, and there are so many of them. I do not remember all the dates, but what remains with me are the moments and the flashes of memories. If you asked me when my daughter shot past me in height, I must admit I do not remember. But I do have this one very vivid memory of the two of us walking back home one evening. 
What I remember is the look of sheer delight on her face as she casually swung her arm over my shoulders just because she finally could. The milestones are only as good as the memories. So maybe the trick is to relax and savor the moments as they happen and not worry about the details. Which brings me to the question, <clears throat> can parenting be fun? How can you find the humor in parenting? I mean, let's face it, however much we love our kids, and we do love them a lot, they can also test our patience a lot. So I want to tell you about one of my tricks, and I call it mastering the voice. It's my own private inside joke, and I can't tell you how much fun I have had with it over the years. Have you noticed kids have selective hearing? Try telling them to come and clean the table and you'll find that they have suddenly disappeared. Either that or you will hear what must be my all-time favorite answer. Two minutes, which basically translates to never. Can you put away your books? Two minutes. Can you help me fold the clothes? Two minutes. I'm having a heart attack. Can you call the doctor? Two minutes. My daughter tells me, sometimes we like to shut off our ears. It depends on what we want to hear. Not kidding you, she actually said that. So if you want to get the kids to listen to what you want them to do, it is not just enough to say it. You have to say it the right way. You have to master the voice. <clears throat> I have a whole variety of voices that I have perfected over the years. So I have the standard firm voice. When that doesn't work, I go in for the garden variety. Do it now! Bark. The kids call it shouting, but that's just semantics. Now let's say we are in a public place and others are watching. Then I go in for the urgent, low-pitched, furious, you better listen to me now or there'll be murder voice. I also have the sarcastic, yeah, right, voice, and the I told you so voice. And let's not forget the martyred, oh, I gave up so much for you voice. I'm sure you've all heard that at one time or another from your own parents. But my most favorite one, my most favorite voice is, do what you want, it's your choice voice when delivered at the right pitch with the exact inflection, it is guaranteed to make the kids realize that they, in fact, do not have a choice. Brilliant, isn't it? Getting them to do what you want without actually saying so. Now, this voice is tough to master, but once you get it, it is the most thrilling one of all. My daughter tells me, I don't know how you have this effect, Amma. Whenever you use that voice, I feel completely to do what you want me to do. You must teach me that voice. I've been using this voice uh, with great success for many years now, but I did not realize just how powerful it was until very recently. I was planning to take my older daughter out shopping one evening. My younger daughter wanted to go play with her friends instead, and she asked if she could. I didn't really mind, uh, so without thinking about it, I casually said, do what you want, it's your choice. She opened the door, went out, only to quickly come rushing back. She had come back just to check something with me. Did I say, sure, do what you want, it's your choice, because it's not a big deal. Or, do what you want, it's your choice, but there will be consequences for not listening to me. Can parenting be fun? Yes. What you need to do is to master the voice. Finding the humor in parenting is not very hard. What you need to do is to see and to listen. When they are younger, as toddlers, it is in all the silly things that they do, clowning around, hamming it up. As they grow into their tweens and their preteens, it is in what they say, cheeky retorts, smart aleck comments, and teenagers, Let's not even talk about teenagers, all that drama. My whole journey to writing my book began when I first started narrating these 
funny conversations I would have with the kids to my husband when he came back from work. It seemed so funny that I started a blog called Things My Kids Say. And what was so wonderful was that so many people would write in to tell me just how familiar it all was. The situations, the dramas, the comments. Turns out this epic parent-child saga of mine was a universal one. More than anything else, discovering the funny side of parenting has helped me find or gain new perspectives in ways that I did not even imagine was possible. As we parent our kids in an increasingly non-hierarchical world, without fear and with the freedom to develop their independent thought, it turns out that we are also raising kids who are so much smarter than we ever were. They question everything. They are so curious and aware and passionate, and they know so much, especially our passwords. Have you seen how easily they seem to be able to find their way around our smartphones? Now, here's the thing. Have you ever tried unlocking your teenager's phone? Try that, and you will be hit with a five-minute long speech, probably the longest your teenager will ever deign to speak to you. A speech about how they are now independent adults. Now, you can try reminding them that technically they are only almost adults, and they are still living under your roof, but they will tell you that's not the point. It's funny how they can get so passionate about things that they care about. So you'll hear all about their fundamental rights as human beings, their rights to privacy, and how you cannot be asking them their passwords or looking at their phones. But what about our passwords, our phones, and our privacy? You've got to be kidding me, right? Have you realize just how cheeky kids are and how they seem to have an answer for everything. Growing up, I could not imagine making fun of my parents. I still can't. But my kids, they routinely pull our legs. They make fun of their father's hair, my age, his forgetfulness, my fussiness, his lame jokes, my vanity. In fact, nothing seems to be off limits. I tell them, you should listen to me. I do know more. Yes, Samma, they say. Old people are wiser. Now, as parents, we could take offense, wring our hands and cry, or we could go on the offensive and scold them for being so cheeky. Or maybe, just maybe, we could try seeing the funny side. And it is kind of funny in a wise guy, smart aleck kind of way. Agreed, it's at our expense, but it is funny. So why do we resist it? Is it because it makes us vulnerable to being hurt? Is it because of our ego? You thought you were perfect, and now it turns out you are not. That's not easy to accept, is it? Perfection is impossible to achieve, and yet society expects us to be perfect. And what's worse is that we expect ourselves to be perfect. Why are we so hard on ourselves? The thing about humor is that it makes you vulnerable, but it can also change your perspective if you let it. Once you stop taking everything so seriously, once you stop feeling offended or hurt or angry, it feels like a huge weight is lifted off your shoulders. Suddenly, you're not under any pressure to be perfect. You have given yourselves the permission to be imperfect, to be human. And what a wonderful feeling that is. Society puts parents, especially mothers, on a pedestal with very high expectations. There exists an idyllic, almost idealistic notion of parent parenting. But the reality is that parenting is confusing, it's messy, it's frustrating, and it's imperfect, and so are we. Opening ourselves up to humor in parenting and in everyday life has the potential to change everything. Agreed, not everybody is born with a very finely honed sense of humor. But just taking a step back and letting life and its experiences flow over us can change the way we look at everything and the way we look at the world. Laughing with our kids, 
laughing at them, and most importantly, laughing at ourselves is probably the best gift we can give ourselves. So, if you're looking for a superpower, I would say try humor. Thank you. <laughs>